intelligence does not occur inside a neuron for most part of it. It occurs in the strands of its synaptic connections to other neurons. The stronger the synaptic connection, the stronger the memories and skills associated with it. When memories and skills are forgotten, the connections either weaken or are replaced by other memories, classic for use it or lose it. This means to build an intelligent system, we'll have to give our artificial synaptic connection the ability to be strengthened or weakened. Let us understand this further using a modern day example. Suppose this is a neuron inside the brain of a fine young man named Neil, who is looking for a date. Similar to many young adults his age, when hormones are blasting forth like fireworks, the most important metric to Neil are the physical attributes of his future partner. Say, he has a strong type, blonde hair. Since our matrix world only understands numbers, let us assign the various hair colors an arbitrary scale ranging from minus one to plus one. Since with each new young lady that Neil meets, he pays special attention to her hair color, his brain learns to assign a higher weight to this particular input, say it sets it to 0.9. And then comes a day when a beautiful blonde young lady confesses her crush on Neil. The day we met, frozen I held my breath. Right from the start, I knew that I'd found the home for my heart. Beats fast, colors and Neil tries to arrive at a decision by using the attribute most important to him, the hair color, and he blows it out of proportion by multiplying it with a high weight. After passing this product through a sigmoid function, he predicts this relationship with her would be extremely fulfilling, and lo and behold, he's right. For a long time. But Neil feared commitment. Eventually, the love of his life decides to move on with a broken heart. Realizing his grave mistake and desperate after losing her, Neil goes back to the dating market and meets more blondes. But this time, despite his positive predictions, none of his relationships turn out to be successful. Frustrated, he decides to calm his nerves by traveling to distant lands but in utter ignorance, gets himself caught up in a dangerous place instead. Lucky for him, Neo is rescued by an elite peacekeeping squad led by someone trained to survive in the face of mortal danger. Even though mesmerized by her, this woman is not blonde. Neil predicts that a relationship with her won't be fulfilling. He couldn't have been more wrong. This makes him realize that perhaps he was attaching too much importance to a superficial attribute such as hair color. His mental model hence not only reduces its weight, it even reverses its sign now that he has grown a liking towards darker hair shades. Neil also realizes that previously he was overly fixated at physical attractiveness and so was neglecting other important attributes like someone's personality, for instance, their trustworthiness. One crude way to quantify trustworthiness is by roughly counting someone's promises and how well they fulfill them. Say, in one year's time, this new person commits to six promises and fulfills five of them reasonably well. 
This makes their trustworthiness score pretty high. Neil's mental model takes in this new input and makes a prediction. To his relief, the reality aligns with his updated mental model. Neo then reflects on his past relationships and using this new metric, he realizes that he can predict the final outcome quite well. And so, while previously he had assigned personality a low weight, he now increases that greatly as a predictor of fulfilling long-term relationships. To summarize the math, given a relevant attribute, we have learned to multiply the weight with the attribute based on its importance in determining the final outcome. And we then scale the input to get the probability. Now we may have a single input or multiple inputs whose weighted values are then added together. Let us proceed step by step to break this down. First, we plug in the weights. Next, we plug in the attribute values. This gives us a probability output. Since Neil's current prediction is above the threshold, he predicts a fulfilling relationship with this person. Now there is one final detail to this equation, the bias, which could be thought of, say, as an inactivity barrier. Note how bias is essentially a weight which takes no input because any number multiplied by 1 results in the same number. If the bias is slightly negative, the probability is reduced having an impact of making Neo, say, a bit more picky. On the other hand, if we throw in a largely positive bias, Neo has a higher probability of predicting a given relationship to be fulfilling and being more open to potential mates. So far, we have considered only two attributes, which in a real-life scenario are clearly not enough. Personality, for instance, is a multidimensional feature, and so is physical attraction. Hence, in reality, we may require hundreds of attributes to create a reasonably accurate prediction model. Coming back to a follow-up question, what is learning? Well, learning can be thought of as the capability of using evidence to update one's mental model such that it gets better and better at aligning itself with reality. The species that failed to learn update and adapt to the ever-changing world then survive. The ones that did, thrived. In our matrix world, we can try getting closer to the reality by tuning these weights like knobs and dials. But there are trillions of synaptic connections in a real human brain. Manually tuning their strengths can be a colossally impossible task. So here is the final missing piece. Learning is not merely tuning these weights, it is automatically doing so. And as a side note, all tunable parts of our model, such as weights and biases, can be referred to as parameters. Come to think about it, we never had to manually hand-tune our synaptic connections to know if we were in danger. Our brains automatically handle it for us, oftentimes without us even realizing it. So how can we accomplish this in our simulation? Before we go any further, let us first return to an important unfinished task that needs some closure. Those signals that our ancient Neo felt were sent by a potential mate. Let us hope he recognizes them as safe and reacts to them positively. The fate of several future species, including mankind, depends on it. Spirit, leave me where my trust is with 